Ladies and gentlemen, this story, unfortunately, is 100% true. The year was 1932. The Great War was over, but there was rumbles in Germany of things, horrors, terrifying events that were to come in the next decade. But in Australia, something else was taking place. There were fears across the land because we were overrun by an invasive force that dictated the lives that we led, that attacked the very crops that fed the people of Australia. Basically, there was a fuck ton of emus and the Australian government said, you know how we're gonna deal with these emus? We're gonna send in the army. Yes, these absolutely batshit fucking crazy birds, these giant birds, who are known by the local indigenous population of Australia as emus, uh, they were taking over Western Australia. There were hundreds of thousands of these birds running around, destroying crops, probably assaulting people in the street, pushing old women over, emus for life and all that type of shit. Gang shit, all right? There was gang violence on the streets with these giant birds. Now, if you don't know, emus are quite big. Not as big as cassowaries, but probably up to about there on me. Now, they're big fucking birds. They've got big fucking wings and they can't fly. So they're angry. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sure, these birds might be scary. They're big, they're fast. They've got big claws, but they're only about that big. They're not going to hurt a person. Nay, you're wrong. They might hurt a very weak person, and the Australian government recognised that. And that's why they, in 1931, they enacted a bill. It was called the Soy Boy Bill. And the Soy Boy Bill basically meant that weak, weak little men that lived out in Western Australia who couldn't handle these emus, they needed help. And that's why we enlisted the help of the Australian Armed Forces. Anyway, let's speed this story up. It's fantastic. So, the emus were absolutely everywhere. And there was one particular group of these emus, and it was 20,000 strong. So we sent out special forces to take them on, only a small crew. It was the Australian version of the movie 300, and King Leonor Duss, who was from the Central Coast, he said to these emus, Fucking no more, mate. Fucking no. And he threw a kick. Sorry, he threw a kick, <laughs> and he missed. He tried to kick him into a big hole. It didn't really work. And then the only way they could think about killing these emus and removing them was to bring in machine guns. <laughs> Fucking hell. By the way, most of this information I'm getting from Wikipedia, which uh, in the description, it has the participants of the war. You know, the military leaders, Australia, and then it just has emus. <laughs> so anyway, so the troops were deployed, ready for a fight for the ages. The war, the war... <laughs> was conducted under the command of Major G.P.W. Meredith of the Royal Australian Artillery with Meredith Commanding Soldiers Sergeant S. McMurray and Gunner J. O'Hara armed with two Lewis guns, which are machine guns from back in the day, and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. They were ready to fight, but guess what happened then? It rained. So the, the war had to be postponed due to wet weather. This war probably wasn't given a lot of confidence to the Australian uh, Defence Force. Or other countries were probably looking at Australia going, hang on, these motherfuckers can't even kill birds. Let's take over. Can we break the Australian lines? Sure, let's just make it rain. <laughs> but after all of that, the Australian weather cleared up two months later, and then it was time for battle. On the 2nd of November that year, the troops, they spotted 50 the emus, they got them in the Lewis gun sights, they were ready to fire, but then something happened, disaster struck, the emus ran away. They didn't have a contingency plan put in place and they ran away and they lived. It was a failure for day one of the war. This video is ridiculous and that's why I interviewed an emu about it. Yeah, I remember that day, clear as day, mate, we saw these bloody heavy machine guns and we pissed bowled it. Instead of just chasing us, the lot, the, all the Aussie troops, yeah, they, they were just, uh, they were pissed. They were playing the old pokies, the 1930 pokies at the local pub. And we ran around like emus do, to live another day. Two days later, a thousand emus were spotted. The Australians were excited. They got those guns out, ready to go. But only after taking 12 emu lives, the guns jammed. And the day was cancelled. Bad weather, cancelled. Guns jammed, cancelled. Fucking, they ran away, cancelled. Who are these fucking troops? No Australian troops were lost, but Private J.P. Connolly suffered severe dandruff and had to be returned home for treatment and head and shoulders. Yeah, honestly, that day we were hung over as fuck and we were just ready to die, bro. We smashed heaps of pingers the night before and we didn't give a shit, you know. If you want to fucking shoot us, go for it, bro. Dominic Lewis Severenti, a uh, Perth-based Australian ophthalmologist, orthonologist, or... Ornithologist, I can't say that fucking word. Ornithologist 
commented that the machine gunner's dreams of point blank fire into serried masses of emus were soon dissipated. The emus command had evidently ordered guerrilla tactics. They're fucking emus, mate! On the 8th of November, representatives from the Australian Defence Force and the Australian Government discussed the operations following the negative coverage of the events in the local media that included claims that only a few emus had died. Pierce withdrew the military personnel and the guns on the 8th of November. They retreated from emus. Yeah, mate, what absolute pussies. Mate, we celebrated for like a night or two, but to give the Australians credit, they came back for round two. The attacks on Australian crops by the emus continued, and this wouldn't, wouldn't stand with the Australian Defence Force. They went back out there, into the bush, they set up again, and they were killing about 100 emus a week. That is not enough. There was 20,000 of them. 20,000. Eventually it got to the point where they ended up killing about a thousand emus and the military personnel, the leaders, went back to the parliament and said, Hey, pretty successful? We killed a thousand of them. No! There's 19,000 left! You haven't successfully defeated fucking flightless birds at all. You've killed a thousand. You put a little dint in their feathery armour. That's all you've done. Here's a crazy idea. A ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous thought that maybe these people back nearly a hundred years ago could have fucking nailed on their head. Why don't you put a fence up around the fucking crops, you dumb fucks? Be a good motherfucker. <laughs> Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East, me dick stinks. I love that fucking story. Uh, also, uh, I'm on tour and there'll be videos. There's four videos every single week. Love is, leave you. Bye. Yeah, we'll be fucking back, mate. We'll be fucking back. I want your crops, bro. I want your crops. I'm coming for them!